Hi, this is Mark Birch, and today I'm going to be analysing and providing revision material for the second part of Jekyll and Hyde Chapter 10, Henry Jekyll's full statement of the case. Stevenson continues Jekyll's philosophical reflections on the possible separation of the moral elements that constitute his identity. Jekyll's statement explicitly refers to the duality of man, and this twofold aspect of identity is reinforced through the semantic field of the double, two natures, twin, and polar twins. The benefits of separating these dual aspects of identity are conveyed through the metaphor of different paths. The unjust might go his way, free from the aspirations and remorse of the just, while the just could walk steadfastly and securely on his upward path. Jekyll is presented as believing that separation of the two aspects of identity, good and evil or just and unjust, would provide freedom for both elements to excel, walking a path free from the moral burdens imposed by the other half of their dual nature. Guilt acts as a burden to the unjust, while desire can make the just stray from their path. The adverbs steadfastly and securely reinforce the positive effects of the removal of the unjust characteristics in terms of the ability of the just to maintain their journey on the upward path. The philosophical considerations conclude with Jekyll stating that it was the curse of mankind that these incongruous faggots were thus bound together. In the Victorian era, a faggot usually denoted a bundle of sticks used for firewood. In this sense, the individual elements are randomly brought together, with no individual value being afforded the constituent elements, or, in this case, faggots. Stevenson may also be alluding to faggots' associations with heresy. A heretic's punishment was fire and faggot being burned at the stake, and for many Christians, the work of Jekyll was a heretical act. Hyde is frequently referred to through images of hell, and Lanyon describes Jekyll as having gone wrong, wrong in the mind. Stevenson maintains the image of the two different moral elements being bound together through the metaphor of the agonised womb of consciousness, in which the polar twins should be continuously struggling. The polar twins refer to good and evil elements that are born within human consciousness. Stevenson may also be using this metaphor as a biblical allusion. Genesis 25-23 states, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. The two twins fought in the womb and throughout their lives. Jacob and Esau could be viewed as representing good and evil, with Esau represented as rough and hairy, mirroring the descriptions of Hyde, while Jacob is described as the perfect man, potentially mirroring the good aspect of Jekyll. The descendants of Jacob and Esau, the Israelites and the Edomites respectively, were enemies for generations to come, perhaps symbolising the way in which the polar twins were continuously struggling in the human mind. For analysis of the rest of chapter 10, please see the remaining videos. Okay, ta.